Hello and welcome to UAS. My name is Pamela Frenzy and I will be your instructor for this material. If you have any questions, please use the question and comment box. So let's get started. The topics for this particular module are going to be based on a new specification. First, we're going to look at the history of bulk transfers. And we have to go all the way back and understand the concepts of bulk transfers in the 1.1 specification. Then we'll look at why develop a new protocol. What are the goals for the new protocol? And then we'll look at how transfers are done within the new protocol. So if we go back to a little bit about history, UAS, what does UAS stand for? First of all, it stands for USB Attached SCSI. SCSI, of course, being a common protocol that most hard drive people are familiar with. In 1999, the bulk only transport was completed, typically called the BOT. That supports a bulk in and a bulk out. It was designed to support USB 1.1. When USB 2.0 was finalized, this particular transfer mechanism was never changed. It was not updated. So it was really designed for a much slower protocol, therefore much slower devices. Command queuing, in, as far as the SCSI commands, being able to queue commands in the device was not possible. And most protocols that the attachment protocol, the connection protocol that you can connect to the device will allow command queuing. So for example, SATA allows command queuing, but bulk only transport of USB did not allow command queuing. It wasn't designed to. Now USB 3.0 allows larger devices like RAID devices. So they wanted larger, more capable devices. Hence UAS. UAS was developed to be able to allow usage of these larger devices like RAID, but allow command queuing, which is a more efficient method to let the send multiple commands and allow the device to determine the order in which it's going to execute those commands. The UAS, if we talk about UAS, we've got definitions as to what's required in the port. Obviously, it has to have the default control pipe. It has to also have two bulk in pipes, one for status and one for data. It has to have two bulk out pipes, one for commands and one for data out. So it's separating basically the status pipe, the command pipe, and the data pipes. These are requirements to be UAS compatible. So no mixing of commands of data or status. They go to different endpoints. No waiting, therefore, for the next command phase because we have a separate command pipe. Here's an example of the pipe communication in the UAS. We have the default control endpoint. That's a requirement back from USB 2.0. Commands go out on the bulk out pipe. Status from the device comes back in on the bulk in pipe. Data to the device goes on the data out bulk end point, and data in from the device comes on the bulk in pipe. So we're able to queue up multiple commands and get the status in the order of which the commands were executed by having these different pipe requirements, therefore different endpoint requirements. So the initiator ports on the left and the Tara group ports shown on the right. It will receive IUs from the initiator port using the command pipe. And obviously it has to respond to those executions via the status pipe. Data in, of course, it will transmit read data. So when the host reads the data, that will come on the data in pipe. And when the host writes data, then it will come, it will go out on the data out pipe. So if we take a look at the different commands, these are different commands for that are supported for the SCSI command set. And so these are the different values. If you take a look, for example, at an IU sequence, the initiator port is going to send the out, out the pipe name. And let me go back 
on this. This is basically the terminology that's used in the sequence. We've got what pipe name it's going under, what IU, and then the tag number. And coming back, it'll be the pipe name, the IU, and the tag number that it corresponds to. So this is the terminology in these next few slides. On this particular one, we have a command. And that command's going to have an IU based on what kind of command it is. That command's going out the command pipe. And it's got a tag value of 1. So when the target port reports its status, it's going to send that back on the status pipe and whatever the status was of that particular tag. This particular command has a no data transfer. So here we have our command coming out, our status coming in, and it's the response to that particular tag. On a write with data sequence, we have the command coming from the initiator port of tag 1. The status says, okay, I'm ready for the write. Then the data comes out, however many bytes of data. Keep in mind, this, can, this is a streaming protocol as well, so there can be multiple data packets coming out. And then finally, there will be a status coming back to confirm the status of that write sequence. Here's an example from the USB tracer, the LaCroix protocol analyzer. And basically what you're seeing here is you're seeing the efficiency, number one, of the, of the protocol. It's doing a write sequence to address one endpoint five, and it's doing 1,024 bytes. And you'll notice that we have acts for some and no acts for others. So again, it's because it depends on what the response was from the from the sequencing. So it's a very efficient protocol that is allowed to happen very quickly. And again, it allows us to use serial attached SCSI or USB attached SCSI devices and allow SCSI devices to perform their command queuing. Here's an example of a broken down write data sequence. So what's happening here is the device says, okay, I'm ready. So before this, in the data sequence, we would have seen a not ready. So here we see E ready. Okay, endpoint one is ready. I expect one packet. The direction is out. All of these are decoded field values for us by the LaCroix tracer. Then the host goes and heads and sends one data packet, and that sequence number is 28. The device receives it correctly, acts back, and says, I want one packet. I expect packet number 29, indicating that I received packet number 28 correctly. The device or the host then will uh, send the next packet, packet number 29. The device acts back and says, I expect packet number 30, and I only want one packet. And the host will send that packet number 30. So this is a very efficient communication protocol for bulk devices, allowing this uh, command queuing by having these different pipes. This is a state diagram for the right data state. And it looks very similar to the state diagram of the other link state diagrams that we've seen previously. But basically, of course, we'll come in and we're going to be in the U0 state here. And this happens to be a screen capture for the particular trace that we just saw before. So if you take a look back at this trace, this trace was a data file captured. And then in the LaCroix analyzer, you can actually go map that to the state diagram and it will show you what state what state or states were entered during that entire trace capture. The only state we were in was U0. So only U0 is highlighted. All these other states are grayed out. That means they were never entered. And in the next module, we'll look a little bit more at how to look at data and what we're looking for and how to enable this state diagram imaging. Here's a read. So a command is set through the command pipe. The status comes, or the, the read ready comes back through the status pipe. And then the data immediately following the data. And then finally the status coming back. So this was a read 
data. Here's an example of bidirectional data because again, we have a transmit pair and a receive pair. So those previous examples I was showing you only show data flowing in one direction. Data can actually flow in both directions because we have a transmit pair and a receive pair. So here we've got the command sent to the target port and it obviously was a read command. On the status port is a read ready command but also on the status pipe is a write ready command. So there's data flowing, as you'll see here, in both directions. And there will always be an acknowledgement status wise on the status pipe at the end of the transmission. So this just shows you that you can have bi directional data within the transfer, it doesn't have to be unidirectional. Here's a multiple command example. And in this particular example, several commands are being sent out. So you'll notice up here, there's four commands sent out. You'll notice that the target says, okay, I'm read ready and I'm write ready. So one of these commands was a read. Looks like this one, tag two was a read, tag four was a write. Okay, so you'll see multiple commands and the device can execute those multiple commands in whatever order it finds itself to be more efficient. So that's one of the benefits to having multiple commands is that devices can execute the command in whatever order it wants. So notice it, ex it executed the second command and the fourth command before it executed the first and the third. And again, this depends on what the device is doing and what the commands are doing, and the device gets to pick its order of execution, making it more efficient. The descriptors. Now, USA does require descriptors. Obviously, you have one device descriptor, one configuration descriptor, one interface descriptor, but you have to have four endpoint descriptors. So if you look at the UAS specification, it says you only need one descriptor, or excuse me, one interface descriptor, but you could have multiple interface descriptors. But each one of those interface descriptors has to point to four endpoint descriptors. And again, those endpoint descriptors are two bulk in and two bulk out because we want to separate data and commands and status for more efficiency so that we can do this command queuing. This is the configuration descriptor for a UAS compatible device. Notice it has to say it's self-powered and it has to say it supports remote wake-up. You can take a look at the specification for the UAS and it will indicate what the maximum power values are. But the device has to be self-powered and it has to support remote wake-up to be USA, UAS excuse me, compliant. So if you have any questions, please use the question and comment box. Thank you for joining us.